Hi everyone, this is Ryan from rpnt.ca and today we're going to be talking about the drug spironolactone, also known as aldactone. Spironolactone belongs to the potassium sparing diuretic drug classification. To get a good understanding of how the drug works, let's break down the words in that class. Simply put, diuretics are drugs that will increase the amount of water and electrolytes that are excreted by the body. They do this by acting on the nephrons of the kidneys. The nephrons are pretty complex, so we won't go too deep into them, but the nephrons are responsible for actually producing urine in the kidneys. So diuretics help to push water and electrolytes, like sodium and potassium, into the urine to be excreted by the body. A good general rule to help remember how this works is that water likes to follow salt, like sodium. So again, diuretics push more electrolytes into the urine, and water follows. The words potassium sparing mean that spironolactone helps to retain potassium or prevent it from getting into the urine. Spironolactone does actually belong to another drug classification known as the aldosterone antagonists. Aldosterone is normally responsible for holding on to sodium and water and excreting potassium. So spironolactone, because it is an antagonist, does the opposite of aldosterone. So again, spironolactone retains potassium and excretes sodium and water. And this is why it's called potassium sparing. There are many uses for spironolactone. It is often given orally for edema in heart failure to help remove excess fluid from the body, especially in hypokalemic clients or clients who have too little potassium. It can be given as an antihypertensive to treat high blood pressure usually in combination with other medications. Due to spironolactone's mechanism of action as an aldosterone antagonist, it can be given for hyperaldosteronism, or too much aldosterone, which manifests as high blood pressure and hypokalemia. One of the off-labeled uses for spironolactone is acne, and its effect on acne is not completely understood, meaning we don't really know exactly how it works to treat acne. Side effects of diuretics include hypotension and dehydration, which may present as dizziness, confusion, and headache, and electrolyte imbalances, such as hyponatremia or low sodium levels. Because spironolactone retains potassium, there is a risk of causing hyperkalemia or elevated potassium levels. Spironolactone can also cause irregular bleeding and irregular menstrual cycles in women and erectile dysfunction in men. These are just some of the important side effects to be made aware of. Because of the many side effects, there are some cases where we want to avoid the use of spironolactone. For example, we may want to avoid spironolactone in clients with hypotension, electrolyte imbalances such as hyperkalemia and hyponatremia, dehydration, acute kidney injury, and more. Spironolactone is also contraindicated in clients who have very little to no urine output, also known as anuria, which is indicative of a urinary obstruction. Always monitor and assess for side effects of spironolactone. Monitor intake and output and wait as needed. Assess for signs and symptoms of hyper and hypokalemia. And remember that the normal range for potassium in the blood is approximately 3.5 to 5 millimoles per liter. And that's about it for the basics of spironolactone. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments or visit rpnt.ca for more help.